Hey guys, welcome to the new chapter. We are starting our chapter on cells, and we've already done a little bit of work looking at uh, what cells are, and uh, we're going to start getting into the functions a little bit more. So we're going to take today, and we are going to focus on the control portion of the cell. So if you remember doing our factory project, we had those six uh, areas um, of function for the cells and control was one of these okay and you already know from doing the worksheet that was posted on the website and looking at the cellsalive.com uh, that our control portion of the cell is all in the nucleus okay we are only talking about the nucleus when we're talking about the control of the cells so in the uh, animal cell your nucleus is the large organelle right here in the middle number four okay number four is listed on uh, on the, the the table that you've been working on and it's also right here number four okay on the plant cell and we know this is a plant cell because we have a cell wall around the outside we have a little bit more rigid structure animal cells are a little more free form because all we have is a membrane uh, but we're going to come back to those membranes and the cell walls in a little bit in a later podcast so we're going to take a look at the nucleus today and a few things that we need to talk about. We already said that this is the control center of the cell. Control center of the cell. And that means that this takes care of the day-to-day -day functions. Okay, so if we think about the, the nucleus being kind of a, a workday type organelle, which is a little bit funny, but this only handles the day-to-day -day functions. Okay, of the cell. So it tells the cell when it needs to replicate, when cells divide. It tells the cell when it needs to move to do to find um, nutrients. If in the case of an animal cell, it tells the cell when it's time to die. Cells actually self-destruct or they commit suicide, uh, and the nucleus controls all of this. This is also the carrier or the location of the hereditary info. Okay, so this is the DNA, or the, uh, actually doesn't hold the RNA, so this is the DNA, and it produces the RNA, or the, the RNA is produced there, and remember these are nucleic acids, okay, nucleic acids, uh, and then there's one other thing that we need to talk about when we're talking about the nucleus is that this has a membrane around it, where we say it's membrane bound. Okay, and that's really important about the nucleus. So if we look at some of these other ones, when we're talking about organelles, these are all membrane bound. So remember inside in all this white space here, this is the cytoplasm or the cytosol. And then all of these organelles, like uh, number nine here, this is just a vacuole all right, or, or a bag of, of stuff. This has a membrane around it and there can be a single membrane or a double membrane. And the nucleus has a double membrane. Okay, so it's a double membrane. And when we look at the nucleus, if we if we look at a zoomed in picture, uh, what we actually see is that it's got, if I'm looking at the membrane, okay, so there's a double layer. We've got these pores in the nucleus, okay, or a little hole that is used to transfer things in and out. Okay, so this is the double membrane, DBL for double. Okay, two layers. And these these holes right here, okay, right there, and again over here, these are called nuclear pores. So this can transport things in and out of the nucleus, and it determines when things need to be leaving the nucleus and when things need to be coming into the nucleus. And that's another really important feature of the nucleus. So uh, just to summarize, we, this is the, the control center of the cell. It takes care of day-to-day -day functions. It holds the hereditary information, so this is where the DNA is housed. And it's a double membrane-bound uh, organelle that has pores that allow things to move in and out of it.